So torque is just a term that we use to explain a turning force. If we want to undo this nut, we're going to have to apply a certain amount of turning force. But the correct way we work out the amount of torque, or the value of torque that is, is by using a very simple mathematical equation. That mathematical equation applies both to me and the spanner. And that equation is simply torque equals force times distance. And so what that means for us is the force that I'm applying to the spanner in the direction I want to turn this nut multiplied by the length of the spanner. To be more exact, it would be the length from the centre of the nut to the place on the spanner from which I am applying the force. That's an important note to take, because the equation doesn't mean to just take the length of the spanner. The force must be applied at the spanner's length if the whole length is to be put into the equation. And this all makes sense because we know, don't we, that if we want to undo a tight nut, then it's not so good to use a short spanner. We either get a longer spanner or a long power bar with a socket to make undoing that nut much easier. So how does this all relate to the torque or the turning force of the engine? First of all, as combustion occurs above the piston, forcing it down, it's the movement energy of the piston in combination with the structure of the engine's crankshaft that gives rise to the amount of turning force or torque that the engine will produce. So we have the piston and of course it's connected to the connecting rod. The other end, the big end bearing of which, is connected to the crankshaft journal. And as we know, the big end main journal is off-centred from the primary shaft, the shaft that turns on the crankshaft. And that's the point of it, it's a crank designed for turning. So the calculation of the torque of an engine then, is the force at which the piston has been pushed down by the explosion of combustion and multiplied by the distance between the main crankshaft journal, where this force is being applied, to the centre of the crankshaft, the shaft that turns. A smaller engine, like a little two-stroke chainsaw, let's say, which as well as having less combustion energy, has a smaller crankshaft with a smaller distance between the main journal and the centre of the main shaft. Please note at this point that I'm only talking about crankshaft torque. So it's purely engine turning force. I'm not taking into account any type of gearing system or any gearbox that's attached to the engine crankshaft to allow better torque at the wheels, etc. I'm just talking about the turning force of the engine itself. So then, if we take into consideration the larger amount of combustion energy that a massive cargo ship engine can produce, coupled with this huge crankshaft from a cargo ship, where the distance from the centre of the crankshaft to the main journal can be well over a metre. And you could imagine the enormousness of one of the pistons and cylinders inside this type of engine, and the amount of combustion that they must produce, forcing that piston downwards. So that incredible force times the metre of distance, and with this engine having multiple cylinders, then the turning force of this engine would be absolutely incredible. As an example, the maximum RPM for one of these engines is around 100 revs per minute. Compare that to a small chainsaw engine, which is anything from 6 to 9,000 revs per minute, producing an overall crankshaft torque of just under 2.5 newton meters, which is around 1.8 pounds feet. But despite the fact that the cargo ship engine is running at only 100 RPM, produces an unbelievable torque of over 7.5 million newton metres, or around 5.5 million pounds-feet. So let's say then that on average a tractor has a 160 horsepower engine, but a Formula One car can have something like a 1000 horsepower engine. Although in this instance, where the tractor has more than six times less horsepower than the Formula One racing car, it seems to have far more strength, more mechanical muscle. Well, I know there'll be the tractor's gearing taken into account with the pulling power of the tractor, but the engine itself 
will deliver more torque because of the way I've explained how the components within the engine are made. But it turns over slower than the Formula One engine. But you'd think that a race car engine, being almost a thousand horsepower, would have more engine power to pull things than the tractor because its engine has more than six times the horsepower. Well, the reason the race car engine can generate such a huge amount of horsepower is because of its ability to rev extremely high. They can rev up to 20,000 RPM. Whereas a diesel tractor engine would rev at around something like 1,500 RPM. That means the race car engine revs something like 13.3 times faster than the tractor engine. It won't have as much torque as a large diesel engine out of a tractor. And we can prove this again with a simple equation. So to work out the engine torque, we simply multiply the horsepower of the engine by 5,252. But what's this figure? Where did this come from? Well, if we plot on a graph the torque versus the revs per minute of a car accelerating, it would look something like this. And if we show horsepower on the same graph, you will see that there's a point at which these two intercross. And looking at the RPM value at that point, you'll see that it's 5,252. We simply multiply the horsepower of the engine by the 5,252 intercross RPM value and divide it by the RPM of the engine. So let's start with the Formula One racing car. We've got the 1,000 horsepower value and we'll times that by 5,252 and we'll divide it by the 20,000 RPM it's capable of. This brings out a value of torque of 262.6 pounds feet. Let's now take a look at the tractor engine. With its horsepower of 160, we'll times that again by 5,252 and divide it by its 1,500 RPM. We then get a staggering 560.21 pounds feet of torque. That's more than twice the amount of torque that the racing car engine produces, despite the fact that the racing car engine has more than six times the horsepower than the tractor. Horsepower is a necessary part of the calculation in calculating torque. To put it bluntly, they are very much related. But of course, there's far more to torque than what I've mentioned here. I've only covered the very basics. But I'm hoping now that you'll at least have a better understanding. And if you like that video, then you might like this one. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.